has the changes that Google has made between Google Drive and Google Photos finally lessened the confusion? What's up everybody, this is Scott. Welcome back to another video. Today's video is the third installment and maybe the final installment if Google has finally got this right between Google Photos and Google Drive. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about the common questions that I've gotten from my last two videos as it relates to Google Photos versus Google Drive, as well as the changes that are coming up on July 10th of 2019 and how that may impact you and the difference between Drive and Photos. Again, some of the common questions that I have and those that are not subject to change with the changes between Drive and Photos are some of the following. How can I store my photos for free using Google Photos? Well, depending on the device that you have, if you have a Pixel device, you might get the high quality or the original quality for free for several years. But for those that don't have that, the way that you do that is do the hamburger menu in the upper left, go to backup and sync and see which one you can choose. The most important factor out of all of that, if you do want the free storage and you do not want to pay or meet your quota as it relates to storage, you must choose the high quality option. No ifs, ands, or buts. If you choose original quality, it will count against the quota that you have in your Google Drive account. Another common question that I get is people want to create folders in Google Photos. That is not how Google Photos works. So the question is, can I make folders in Google Photos? No, you cannot use and make folders in Google Photos. I wish I could make Google do those things, but I can't. So if you wanna curate your photos using folders, you do that in Google Drive. If you wanna curate using Google Photos, you do that by selecting albums. In order to make a Google Photos album, select the number of photos that you would like to add to an album. You can make that a shared album or you can just make it an individual album. You wanna hit that plus mark in the upper right hand corner, select album or shared album, and that's how you go about creating the album using the pictures that you have. If you use a shared album and you share the link or invite people via email, people can start to curate that album for you with their photos. It's something that's great for vacations. Uh, Greg and I's family, we went on vacation with my family as well. Uh, way back in Disney last year in 2018, and we just curated one great big album, which was super nice. So again, shared albums if you wanna share that out and have others add to it, or just create that album using the plus mark in the upper right-hand corner. Speaking of curation between Drive and Photos, if I curate my Google Drive folder and then upload it to Google Photos, does that folder remain? No, just like the previous question, folders live in Drive, Albums live in photos. The two do not actually cross paths. Unfortunately, it's just something that Google does. So if you want to curate in photos, it's albums. Curate and drive, you can do that via folders. People want that folder structure, I suppose. So that is definitely in Google Drive. Now, all of the other questions are in relation to if I do something in drive, what does it do in photos? But this is where I have to change the bit of the subject in this video and talk about what Google's doing on July 10th. Starting in July, new photos and videos from Drive, that's really, really important, from Drive won't automatically show in photos. Right now, today, before July 10th, if you add photos in Drive, you can see them in your Google Photos app. After July 10th, you will not have the ability to do that. Similarly, new photos and videos in photos will not automatically be added to the Photos folder that's in Drive. If you're like me and you have the option to show the Google Photos folder in Google Drive, you'll see that after July 10th, that's gonna stop syncing. So everything before July 10th will still be there, but the automatic syncing between the two will stop on July 10th. So again, one of the common questions that I got was, if I delete in Drive, what happens in Photos? And if I delete in Photos, what happens in Drive? After July 10th, all of that mess goes away. So it says, if you delete in Drive, it will not delete in Photos, and then vice versa. If you delete in Photos, it will not, not delete in Drive. Again, that is after July 10th, 2019. They say it's to prevent accidental deletion. Honestly, I think it's just to get rid of some confusion. I never really had the accidental delete problem, so I think it's just to lessen the confusion. I wanna highlight a couple other things that they specifically mention that's gonna happen after July 10th. They say the purpose of this is to make you easily choose where photos and videos are stored across the products. When you upload or delete photos in Drive, 
the changes won't reflect in the other service, which means if you do something in Drive, it doesn't show up in Photos. If you do something in Photos, it doesn't show up in Drive. Again, that counts for deletion, that counts for adding, that counts for subtracting, that counts for everything. They are essentially two standalone services at this point. Now I wanna address the storage space concerns because I can just hear people already talking about like, well, what happens if my storage? Or like, am I gonna double count and have duplicates and things like that? So in this section, I'm gonna specifically talk about the storage. So from a storage space perspective, basically, Everything before July 10th remains exactly the same. If you had the high quality before and you had them sync across, it still doesn't take up any of your storage or anything like that. Now they're saying if you use backup and sync to upload photos and videos to Drive and Photos, they will not take up duplicate storage space. However, if you're choosing original quality, it is going to take up your storage space, just not duplicate, if that makes sense. If you delete one copy, the other one will continue to take up the storage space if you chose the original quality. If you chose high quality in Google Photos, it doesn't take up any storage space, so you don't have to worry about that. So this gets into some of the other common questions. I'm gonna run through them really quick. What happens when I delete a photo in Drive and or in Photos? After July 10th, it's gonna delete either in Drive or it's gonna delete in Photos. The two of them will not cross. You don't have to worry about anything like that. What happens if I update directly to Drive and not Google Photos? If you put anything in Google Drive, anything at all, including photos and videos, it's gonna count against your storage quota. So this was kind of one of those weird videos. I'm probably cobbling this together in post because honestly, they didn't make it less confusing. I know that they've decoupled it, but again, the way that they've worded some of these in the help articles, it doesn't make it easy. So this is the TLDR out of all of this. They're decoupling drive and photos. If you want free photos, go to Google Photos and choose high quality. Do not ever upload through Google Drive. If you don't care about that and storage isn't a problem, you can choose the original quality and upload through Photos or upload through Drive. However, if you want to use the Google Photos app to see all of your pictures, you must use Google Photos. That's really the easiest way to explain all of this. Photos and videos, go to Google Photos. Everything else that's not a photo or video, go to Google Drive. Just think of that as just a big holding repository for everything not a photo or a video. All right, that's it. That's all I have. Thanks for watching. As always, like, share, subscribe, thumbs up. Leave a comment below. This is going to be a terrible edit. And we will see you next time.